Malik, we're back at you with another week. You're listening to him. I'm Trey, and I'm here. You know, bored as hell, but I'm here. (laughs) Hey, y'all. I'm Aaron. It's Stevie, y'all. I'm back, too. Yeah. What's up? What's up? And we're just going to do a quick little check-in. Is the girls mad? Is they okay? What's what's going on out here? Um, So I'm going to say that I know our intro was a little weird. It sounded like we were like the Powerpuff Girls. Um, and we were all trying saying our names before we like lifted off into space. Okay. But I like the Powerpuff Girls, so I'm all right with it. But um, I'm okay. Um, I can't complain. I'm ready for spring break. Um, I'm, be- I'm ready for a break. I'm ready for some time off. Um, I'm tired of being vegan. Um, and I want a chicken wing. So yeah, that's really it. Hi, y'all. I'm okay. Um, I just realized that I'm turning 29 this month. Like, Ooh. bitch, I am. Uh, I'm like, wow. Like, I'm really looking forward to celebrating this birthday. It's been an amazing year already. And even though, you know, some things have been hitting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm still grateful for all that's going on. And um, just, I'm just really thankful. God has been so good to me. Um, and yeah. What's going on, my light skinned brother? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to not do that thing where I let uh school just like turn me into a hermit. Um it, it's good to focus, but I should, you know, step outside a little more often. So um my my mission for well, I mean, it's, it's you know a, a summer is approaching, you know, so we're gonna I'm 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 be taking summer classes, but I'm I'm be out in the streets. Y'all gonna see me with my legs shaved and and ah, oiled up, okay. you know what I'm saying, strutting around Central Park. Uh, so catch me out there, nah, but um, n- nothing much been happening, just just work, uh, just work and school, uh, midterms and and whatnot. So pray for me. Um, I basically been trying to uh, work on getting negativity out of my life for good. Um, I've been doing, again, a lot of meditation. This is going to be a continuation of everything. I'm going to keep meditating to keep negativity out of my life. Um, again, still looking for work. I'm trying to get my feet back on the ground and just want to, you know, straight and narrow. Um, and just working on me. I am a huge person to say that I need to work on myself a lot. I have a lot of things going on in my brain, a lot of places where I get depressed and in my room and just losing myself. And then there's places where I can get my ass back together. So that's pretty much all I've been doing. Um, so I got one thing that I want to say, um, and I want to get y'all opinions on it real, real quick, nothing real serious, no deep dive into the shit. But my question is this, so I know I may be a few weeks late, but it's always a reoccurring thing on on Twitter. Um, y- people, why are we hating on Dre? Uh, oh. Why are we hating on this man? I don't think it's a hate thing, girl. We just—it's it, just that it, this is the one that's been wearing think, the best, right? Yeah. I think it's—I think it, it's catty. It is very catty, and it's a hateful behavior over a damn vest. And honestly. The bitches that, to me, I feel like the people who are hating don't understand a brand and how to keep yourself, not keep yourself relevant, but how to keep the things that you're, you're, that you find important to you relevant. So for him, that, um, for him, uh, finding, getting equality for all and justice for all, for all of us out there, um, 
all of us people of color out there and to just be coming for him because he wears a vest to an award show i just think it's dumb like i just think like okay but you know it's him like that's the thing like that's the reason for the damn vest because when you see that shit you know it's him so why are we like i'm trying to figure out why people are so mad like why are you mad sister why are you mad it, it goes beyond his vest people actually do hate him um oh, they i didn't they know do. that I don't know her tea. Like, can you, know, can you? People, What's people, the people attack. The people attack him on the um on the internet about his uh, visibility as it relates to um, his politics and the mission that he originally set out to do. They uh, feel like he is spending too much time um, taking pictures with celebrities and going to events and not enough time uh, actually working on you know what matters. Uh, I feel like those type of people they they don't know enough to be making those sorts of conclusions. You see only what he puts on social media. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, either way he does it, you're not, you're not going to be here for it. If he filmed every uh, march or every talk that he went to, then you would say that he's not being genuine. And if he, you know, uh, posts the pictures of him at the Vanity Fair party, you know what, then you say he's not genuine. He doesn't win. You don't like him just because you don't like him. And since when does visibility uh, make someone... A, the master of the movement, mm -hmm. and B, uh, somebody less effective at caring about the movement. Like, what, what, the, what the fuck do you want? The vest thing, I saw a tweet. Somebody <laughs> said, no, no, somebody said that, I think he talked about it before, how he has an emotional attachment to the vest. Okay. And I that it might that be a about. result, it might be a security blanket of sorts as a result of some sort of trauma that happened to him. And so... If that's true, then y'all are absolute trash for 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 trash and for, like let that man wear whatever the fuck he wants to wear. Like y'all don't know enough about him to be just judging him like this. And like y'all go, people go in on him on the internet, and it it pisses me off. It's it's really it makes and it me be really gay upset. black men that be like reading yeah. the most, and which which is my issue. And it's with crazy the because thing. he's a gay black man too. He's part of our community. Leave him alone. Like real life. Like chill out on that motherfucker. Like oh. <laughs> I just think like, that I think that the um. It's interesting, again, we have another young black man being targeted, you know, for no apparent reason. Um, and I think going back to what Aaron said, what people don't understand about movements now and specifically civil rights moves, movements, there has been a the commercial component has been added to that. Mm -hmm. Like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and Malcolm X weren't out there making commercials. And you know what I'm saying? Like there is, with social media comes different responsibilities. And I don't think that, like you said, because D-Ray is out hobnobbing and meeting with certain people and taking pictures, that doesn't mean he's less for the cause, you know? Um, and again, like all the gay girls out there like bashing him, like, girl, sit down because at the same time, I can't, and this is the same with the whole trans rights. Like we as gay men cannot be tearing down certain, uh, our brothers and sisters in the community because we're only doing that to ourselves. Yeah, we'll be right back. Hey, y'all, it's Trey. And like always, we want y'all to fucking listen to us. So you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Radio Public. God damn, bitch, we everywhere. Okay, so make sure you comment, repost, like, share, rate, tell a friend who needs it in them in their system. Okay, and make sure you catch us every motherfucking Wednesday. Like we said, catch us every Wednesday on the dot. And we love y'all. Bye. And we're back. Hope you enjoyed that small break. Um, there's been something on my heart that I wanted to bring up. So I was on Jacked a couple days ago. And um, I think my stats are up there. Like I'm 5'7", 120 pounds. And I get a lot of flack for my weight. There are people who've actually asked me if I was HIV positive because of like my, my weight. 
And this guy was like, he messaged me and he was just like, hey, are you really 120 pounds? And I'm like, is this really how you want to like jump up in my inbox? And he was just like, well, how many times a day do you eat? And just all of this like rigmarole. And so my question to you is, do you have preferences? Should preferences exist? Do do preferences, preferences hurt? And we're just going to center a discussion around that. So what's up? So essentially, I know that um, in our community, there has been a growing effort to stop the um, no fats, no fems. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm totally with that movement. Um, I think that's just an ignorant way to put it, an ignorant way to even face your whatever it is, right. if it's a preference or such. But I do think that there's a further discussion that we need to have about whether we have preferences. Um, I think that we try to be so non-judgmental, um, try to be all, be inclusive of all, but we can't deny what we are attracted to. Um, so for me, like, I don't, I'm, I don't like, uh, I don't know how, I don't always preference and say I'm feminine. Um, I feel like I balance between the two depending on what goes on. Okay. And um, I just want to say like, but I'm not fem fem either, honey. Listen, but I like, ain't fem fem, but I ain't so masculine masculine. For me, I don't necessarily date feminine men. I've never dated a feminine man. A man um, and that's just how my, my story has gone. Um, and so when I do date men or, or look for men, it's the more masculine men. Um, and it's no shade to the feminine girls because sis, hey sis, um, sis all day. <laughs> Yo. It's just not my preference. And I feel like that word is just so harsh and just so, I, I'm disgusted by the word preference, but I have preferences. Um, and it's hard to be like, oh, I don't have them. And like in a perfect world, we wouldn't. But we do. And so for me, am I wrong? Like, I know we don't, like, I'm just saying, Aaron, am I wrong for for preferences? <laughs> I wish y'all could see Aaron face me. See, I, I this is like a light bulb with all. I only said it because one, he been real quiet, okay. and I know something is sticking in his head. Uh-huh. But also, I know he has thoughts on preferences, and it's a it's a it's a it's a trended topic in his mind, oh. in his head. So, baby, let let it all hang out. Okay. I know you want to yell at me. <laughs> Set it off, bro. Because yeah. I know I probably said something that you ain't like. So, so yell at me. Ooh. I'm not trying to yell at nobody. <laughs> she in a day. I. I was quiet because I was trying to organize my thoughts. I I tend to go off on a tangent when I talk about stuff. But I think the word preference has uh, been being used casually to describe something that's a little more insidious. Um, I think preference would align more along like, oh, you know, I I prefer guys that are like my height or taller than me. I think that is more in line with what preference means. Mm. I think that saying, oh, I don't, you know, date feminine men or, oh, I don't date um, uh, Asian men. That is not preference. That is uh, discrimination. Um, that is femphobia. You know what I'm saying? That is wrong. Um, and you have to think about the the source. I mean, you, you there's not. So if I say I preferred a guy that was my height or taller, it could be because of the way we fit together when we hug or when we, you know what I'm saying? Like you could trace it back to a source easily and it's a benign source. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to, oh, I don't like feminine men, when you drag that to its actual source in your heart of hearts, what's the real reason why you don't? Mm -hmm. That's, and there's something dark there. You know what I'm saying? That was something that was maybe you you learned that or society has made it so that that is the norm or, you know, what have you. And it's, it's something that, causes damage because now you're excluding people you're othering people based off of things that they can't change now i understand that height is not something that you can change but i still feel like that is more benign than saying no fats no femmes or saying oh i don't you know date black men or you know what have you and i think a good example of that is you know black men who don't date white men 
the no no, and I'm not and I'm not villainizing. I'm saying like the reasons why. Think about that. The reasons why uh, have everything to do with uh, you know race relations and and the history of racism in our country and you know how things are you know degrading at a quick rate you know nowadays in today's society. Those all those reasons all make sense, but it's like it. Let me see if I can see if I can organize what I'm trying to say. Preference is just it, it, it it's not what people have been using it to be. You know what I'm saying? Like you when you say you don't want to date um black men or you say that you don't want to date feminine men or you don't want to date someone that's trans, the these the the real reasons behind these have to do with a, a discrimination. You know what I'm saying? They have to do with a phobia and they have to do with uh, 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 some sort of wrong view that you have of these people and they're humans and they should be given the same consideration as everyone else. So um, I definitely didn't make any sense just now, no, but you no, you're good. You know, that's yeah. But when, when you say that um, I, I think of, um, I remember a while ago, um, genuine was in the news um, about, Yo, <laughs> continue, baby. Uh, am I free to con- is that, is continue? That a- continue. It's okay. okay. Um, he was in the uh, the news because he was on some reality show, and um, he said that he just wasn't attracted to one of his trans castmates. Um, wasn't b- trying to be ignorant. Wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Just said, "I'm just not attracted to you." Um. For me, I'm thinking, I don't want to say that's a preference um, because you're not attracted to who you're just not attracted to. Um, But I remember him getting a whole bunch of, um, some people were saying that he was transphobic. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people were just, were like, no, he's not transphobic. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand myself, Mm -hmm. the difference, Mm -hmm. because he can, I feel like you are it's all right for you to not be attracted to who you're not attracted to. And it does the woman a disservice to lie and say that you are when you're not. And so for me, I'm, I don't want to lie. And when I say I'm not, I necessarily don't date feminine men was, is never for me to say, Oh, I don't ever see myself dating a feminine man or I, I exclude them. From the category, it's more so is at this point in time where I see myself, I don't date um, feminine. I haven't dated a feminine man. Um, and so that's that's all my point was. Somebody went to sleep on hey, me. Girl. Hey, hey. Um, my thing is, uh, I think my preference comes and goes because it was certain times where I was looking. I was looking for like a, a masculine man and two of my exes have been extremely feminine and i've dated them and fallen in love with them and not and i never thought that i would do something like that i'm always looking for the masculine man and now i've noticed that me i've started gravitating towards feminine men a little bit more i think i spoke to malik about this saying that i'm starting to think that feminine men are very very attractive and i'm extremely feminine myself so it's like a little different for me now Ah, you don't i have I'm not fam, fam, but I'm not masculine, just masculine. Fem, bitch. I'm fam. I'm a, I'm identified with fam, but Malik, that's funny. Um, but yeah, I know some girls. Oh, I know the girls too, but baby, I feel like when I get around the girls, I'm the girls. Now that's the part. That's that the tea. Say, that's the tea. I feel like I'm the girls. I'm around the girls. But like I said, my whole preference has changed since like forever because I was always like masculine guys as my thing bitch I'm chasing the masculine men the muscles all of that shit and then I've come to find out that I've never actually dated someone who was extremely masculine mm-hmm. crazy right mm-hmm. so um child I think in my younger years I was definitely top only like girl I'm not fucking with the femme girls like you need to be like you know pants hanging down you need to have deep voice and that's how I was introduced to the gay scene you know um but the more that I learned about myself and my responsibility to the gay community um now I'm pretty open and girl like it's no shade it can go either way um I will have to say though generally I do date masculine men um but I'm always 
bitch. Okay. I'm always open because no shade. Girl. It be the films that be done in New York. Like, you know, um, they, they be done. Um, but at the same time, like preferences do are hurtful, you know, because at the end of the day, we all want to be attractive to someone. Mm -hmm. And when we don't fit into that category or that circle or that box, it hurts, you know? Um, and I think that if you're going through certain things in your life um, or you're at a certain stage of your life, those preferences may hurt a little bit more mm -hmm. than if you're like fully aware as to who you are, your worth and what have you. Um, it's fairly difficult to navigate. I mean, because even if you are aware that you've been socially conditioned to not be sexually or emotionally attracted to a certain type of person, mm -hmm. yeah. it's difficult to just immediately unlearn it. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to immediately just cast it aside. You know what I'm saying? These are things you have to unpack um, because they are like they're in your head. You know what I'm saying? It's not just like a surface thing. It goes deeper than that. So, um and I think that comes with like self exploration, that comes with reading, that comes with like experiences. And again, I think that the reason why I, ha I have changed is because I was around the girls, you know? Baby. Around the girls, the girls will change you. It'll make you think of some shit that you're not supposed to think. Your mind's supposed to be on one thing, and the girls will come around and be completely different. I mean, I, I used to, this is not related to dating, but I, I, I used to think, I used to be one of those gay guys that would say shit like, oh, yeah, you know, like, um, if you're girl, like why why are you girly? Like we're, we're still men. Like you know, what I'm saying? I didn't like to be called girl or sis. Like oh, no. I would get I was angry. Here for that. <laughs> and you know, like and the, the person that I am now, I I say girl more than anyone else I know. <laughs> it's like it's just it comes as a result of, like you said, experiences, meeting people, and becoming Both friends with people, and learning and reading and like everything that you said is 100 percent true. Yeah. So and I'm sorry, like I want to be a fan of you and say it's you um, and a few like other friends that I have in Virginia who are masculine identifying and presenting. But like, don't shy away from just the experiences that you've been around. Like you're one of the the guys that I that, that be like, girl, pay it, Mamas. everything. <laughs> and it's that. just yeah. like nice to see someone, um, you know, in, in, in their own tees and but comfortable. And it's like it doesn't affect like how masculine you are or how other people perceive you, because we need more people like that mm -hmm. in the community, um, just because it's really hard as a femme to advocate femme rights without that other half of the community behind us is and i hope i said that in a yeah. thank you I, I i love you yeah, <laughs> yeah. give her, her shit girl yeah yo we got a listener question okay uh, so this question um ask us uh do we ever feel um overwhelmed with making connections and branding ourselves while living in new york so, I know for uh, for a fact that the brand master. <laughs> you know I got to give you a lot. Thank you. I try sometimes, <laughs> bitch. I be building some brands over here. I love um, you, I don't feel. I don't want to say I feel overwhelmed. Um, I just have been given a lot of opportunities that um, I'm not always ready for. Um. And there's been a lot of times where things have fallen into my lap where I'm like, oh, shit, and want to do it and can't because there's other shit going on currently. currently. And then I feel like I missed out on, on, on something that could have been special. And so for me, I don't often feel overwhelmed. Um, but in New York, it's really make it or break it. Um, building your personal brand is something that you really got to work on and you can't make too many mistakes with it. Um, because while New York is big and there's a million of people, or millions of people around, they'll remember your ass. Um, and they will remember that time where you said you were going to do something and you didn't do it or that you um, showed up real late to an um, interview. And they will remember those times. So for me, I make sure that I'm on my P's and Q's everywhere. Um, people, they, the, the boys know that I, I don't often go out. Um, and sometimes that's 
that's my um mechanism to somewhat um keep a certain type of image and look just because I know the difference. Um I know going out and acting a fool and how I look doing that. And when I moved, I didn't want to bring that same type of energy because I was like in a business, in a work, in a grind mindset. So for me, I don't feel overwhelmed with the connections, but I do see that um, I do feel weight of how important it is. Um, how about you guys? Um, I think that living well i tweeted earlier today that part of li- having an efficient life in new york city is being on idle pilot um and i know i don't know if it has anything to do with what we're talking about but bringing me into what my point is is that like yo we are on display from the time that you walk out of your apartment until the time that you decide to go back home. And it is a very stressful place when you're like going through stuff. It's like you have to put on like a mask almost when you're like hitting it, you know? Um, And it's really hard uh, to live in New York uh, because socially it's just like really, really crazy. Um, There's some times where I really miss living in Virginia when I could just put on my little ones and twos, bitch, hit it in my 93 um, Malibu, gold Malibu, bitch, and go to 7-Eleven on a banshee tip. But it's just like now that, you know, I live in East Village and, bitch, I can't even walk to the deli now without getting in a full look, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And... But that's the lifestyle that we've 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 chose because we live in New York. Um, But it's daunting. Um, Hella daunting. There's sometimes where, bitch, I just want to come out in a trash bag, bitch, and just pump. But you can't do that because you got to take a train, you know, Mm -hmm. or or whatever. So I don't know. Um, But it's sometimes you have to unplug from that, though, because that that can be a lot, you know, (laughs) overstimulating. I um. I think that it, it. I think it's. It can be overwhelming sometimes. The it, okay. So speaking as a creative, it, it can be really overwhelming at times to um, feel you feel the need to 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 network and, and and connect with people. And New York City is a really great place to do that. And so you feel like you okay. I, I gotta go to this thing, or I, I I gotta contact these people, or go to this event and and show myself. And 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 you could easily burn yourself out or or get really stressed about it. Um, so to answer the question, I think, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I do feel overwhelmed sometimes and it's really easy to feel overwhelmed. Um, talking solutions, I, I, you know, just, um, don't feel like you have, like everything has to happen right now. I mean, you, you always hear those stories or those lists of like celebrities or people that, you know, it took a little bit for them to get their groove, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying you should just chill and be stagnant, but don't feel the need to, go to everything and consider like, you know, believe in yourself and, and promote your brand and, you know what I'm saying? Make connections, but don't feel the need to do it so much that you just, you're, you're missing sleep or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you're not taking care of yourself. Like it's not, it can't, shouldn't ever be to the detriment of your own self, like your health and your wellness uh, emotionally and physically. Um, but it's easy to feel that way, especially in New York city. Um, I like to look at it um from the sense of, you know, when you have like a huge following like I do on Twitter and stuff, I think people put like a crown on my head like I am like the most popular girl in the world. And I always like to tell them all the time, I'm a regular ass bitch, regular as fuck. I think I'm as regular as it gets. I don't like, you know, think that I'm the shit. I don't I don't think any of that. So when it comes from Twitter and everyone like, oh, well, Stevie, you have 15,000 followers. Yeah, but girl, the thing about it is I will probably never meet any of these people in my life. Um, You know, I love them for following me, but, you know, it's really nothing. You know, it doesn't, nothing comes with following and people on your back. Like, it has nothing to do with anything, but it's also they think that when I am, you know, as popular as I am on Twitter or whatever, it's like now I have to wear like a mask of being like happy all the time or, oh, Stevie is Stevie so fetch. Oh, my God. He is so fetch. He's just doing all the baby. I am, again, regular as fuck. Don't let that title or them followers get you twisted, baby, because I get in my feelings just like the rest of you girls. And I don't want anyone to ever think that that comes from me. I am, again, regular as fuck. You don't dress all regular. 
I'm going to a baby look, shower, baby. I'm regular. only dressed. I'm just saying, bitch, and with them eyebrows and everything. I just got my cut, baby. I guess I'm feeling my zhuzh. You ain't that regular. You ain't today, no regular today. Regular. Sometimes I come to recording, I think I look a hot ass mess. No, no, no. Oh, I think I look a hot ass mess. Fuck what these girls are talking about. I guess. <laughs> um, but I also got another question. I always got questions. Um, bitches, what's your songs? What's your jams for this week? Uh, um, Baby. bitch, we we need to get this going. What's your jams, ho? Mine is 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 um. So my 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 favorite group in all the world right now. Their their name is Third Story. Three guys from New York City. Uh, they're fantastic. Um, so look them up. Third Story. They just released their uh, new album on the ninth. Uh, it's called Cold Heart. Um, and one of the songs from that album is called Goodbye, My Friend. And um. It's like a reflection on the ending of a friendship or relationship. And uh, it's it's beautiful. And, you know, it's beautiful and sad. And I, I, I love it uh, for those two reasons. You, you know, I've said before that I, I love me a ballad, a sad ballad. Um, but Come on. it, it, it kind of takes you back, you know, to whatever time, you know, because everybody's been in that situation where you had to end a relationship or end a friendship and the emotions that you felt in that um, situation and it brings it back. And so it would kind of take me places on the train. But I keep listening to it because I love their voices. And, um, you know, the, in, in the direction that the album has gone in and everything. So listen to the album. Uh, listen to the song. It, it's really good. So that's my jam. So it's my turn. Um, so this song isn't something that's new. It's been out for a long time. Um, but it was a cover that I heard. Um from a singer on The Voice. Um, her name is Christiana Danielle. Um, and she sang Hotline Bling. And mm. let me tell y'all, um, I love singers that, that are, I just love a song that is stripped down to a, a minimal state um, where I can see your raw talent. Mm -hmm. um, and Hotline Bling, as we all know, ain't the most difficult um, lyric cool song in the world but she makes it so raw and just gave me goosebumps the first moment I heard her the, the first note um, it's a totally different arrangement um, she gives you some 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 maroon five pop rock vibes some jazz some R&B it, it is an amazing an amazing um, cover, and I wish her all the best on The Voice. I don't watch that shit, but um, I may vote for her one or two times if I see her in the bottom two or something. Um, but yes, please check that song out. So what's y'all's? Um, mine is Peace of Mind by Kalani from her... Um, Come on, Peace of Mind? Sexy, what is it? What's the name of the album? Um, Sweet Sexy Savage album. Um, I didn't like Kalani when she first came out, but uh, her most recent album is some teas. Like, mm -hmm. I really like how urban she is, and like, you know, it's really cute for her. Uh, bitch. Uh, my favorite song uh, or jam of the week is by Dreezy. Uh, um, uh, wasted. Now, bitch, oh, I have. Shit. Bitch, that is my fucking song. And the only reason I said that that's my song is because I have like a deep connection with it. There was a guy that I was dealing with that would only hit me up when he was wasted and wanted to see me. And I actually really, really liked him. And it came from like, you know, wh why the fuck are you hitting me up every time you are drunk or high and you know that I really like you? Why do you do that? Why do you take the time to, you know, fuck with my feelings or fuck with my emotions? I know this is exactly what you do. Oh, well, now I'm drunk and I'm high. Let me hit Stevie up. No, leave me the fuck alone. I actually had to break that relationship in half. And I look at him from a distance and he still shoots me texts every now and half. then bitch had to cut it in half um but you know drizzy like basically you know explains exactly what the fuck i was going through with that dude like and every time i hear that fucking song bitch it gets me and matter of fact after this recording i'm gonna listen to it again because it opened my eyes to how niggas really are i like y'all songs i heard them before but i like them <laughs> um, thank you <laughs> like always y'all we'll see you every wednesday yeah. Don't go nowhere. We love y'all. This is Trey. This is Trey.
What? <laughs> this, this Bitch, is... I was waiting for all y'all to say this is who y'all are. Never mind. <laughs> Whatever. Bye. We love y'all. Yeah, baby. Kisses.